was yeah, good. Yeah, Mark was just a big company. It was just, it was so, it was like nice. to call a meeting to order? It's 5.30, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, any agenda changes or additions? There are not. Okay, thank you. So going right to new business, structure of the TA hiring committee. Would someone like to start the discussion on that process? Well, this is to decide on the membership of the committee, correct? Yes. Well, the only thing that I would mention is, is that um, I think earlier in May, um, we uh, as a board made a motion on this very subject. So I think that if we're going to walk down the path of revisiting it, which I think we should, I'm not saying that, um, I think that we need to be mindful that any change in the direction of the, of the committee uh, makeup, um, we would need to rescind the previous action if we so chose. Okay. Would you would you think that we should have um, uh, not honor consider a motion now or have some discussion first? I mean, I think it's fair to have some discussion about it because if it doesn't change, it's a moot point. But if okay. there's a sense that there would be a change uh, in terms of the direction of the committee makeup, then we would just need to rescind the prior. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not an attorney on this, but I think that we would want to rescind the prior motion of that meeting and then make a new motion okay. if it's going to change. That's just right. a point of order, I guess, more than anything. So the structure of the hiring committee as we had before were all the department, not all the department heads. We had um, we had head of finance and HR and the chief police and the highway department and inter and uh, the town clerk. I think those are the five for internally. The five select board members. And, and Judy. Oh, I'm and sorry. Judy. And Judy. I'm sorry. And Judy. Yes. <laughs> And um, and the five select board members. Right, and that and that would not include Eric um, as part of that committee as well. I'm sorry, what was that, Chris? I said it would not include Eric in that committee. Thank you. Yeah. And then we had two members of the public. And two members of the public was part of that motion. Right. Yes. Thank you. And that motion was made. Do we have a date on that? Not that it matters too much, but May eighth. May eighth. Thank you. I think I made that motion, but it's probably is it important that the person who made it rescinds it, or is it just that the board itself rescinds it? Can't really answer that. Um. <clears throat> I think it's a new motion. I think a new motion to re rescind the prior action. It's not that you're withdrawing that motion. It right. would be a motion to mm -hmm. rescind if that's the route that we go to. So. Yeah, that would. Well, I think if we're going to discuss the structure of the committee, we probably, it wouldn't make sense to discuss the structure of the committee when we already have an accepted motion on the part of the board. For what that committee is going to be so i think if we're going to discuss it we need to get rid of the old motion and okay discuss it and okay then move forward maybe we end up in the same place but yeah. you know at least we we've, we've had that discussion so i would make the motion to rescind the um, motion that was made and voted upon and agreed upon on may 8th regarding the structure of the hiring committee for the New town administrator. I would second that motion. Let's have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I, I suppose I'll say aye as well for the purpose of discussion. Okay. So it's unanimous. All right. Would you like to open the floor, Don? Sure. I'll I'll start. I mean, I I I did say at the very beginning of that discussion I was. I think my very first comment was the size of the committee. Mm -hmm. It is 13 people. That's a lot of people. Um, I still have concerns about the number of people. I 
think, you know, I think no matter what, you know, the five of us are obviously involved in this. And I would say, I would strongly believe that the five of us are going to make that final decision. So regardless of who's on that committee, I would want to make sure that we are the five votes in the end as to who is going to be hired, if anybody's hired, and assuming somebody will be hired. The, um, I mean, it makes sense to have the department heads there because they can ask questions. Some of them are in the room today. They can ask questions that this guy, this guy for one, might not even think, <coughs> certainly wouldn't think about, it, maybe not even dream about. So it'd be really good to have them in, in the conversation and you know individuals on the committee to to bounce thoughts off of so in my mind you have having jason there having kevin there having paula there having tina there judy and who was our other Dave? sarah sarah, sarah. Oh, okay. okay and sarah so those would be our six in my mind what has i guess come to light Conversations, emails to me, conversations to me are the two community members. And, uh, you know, does it, make, does it make sense to go down that road of choosing those people when the five of us have already been chosen by the community to represent the community? <coughs> and we're going to make that final decision anyways. And I know I've, I was... Uh, I, I was one advocate for putting those community people on there. But I've had phone calls. I've had people say, what, what are you doing? You, you guys you guys were elected to represent the town. You guys are the ones that were put in charge. Um, and it does speak to my very first comment, which was at the size of the committee, even 11 is a lot. That's a lot of individuals in the room. That's a lot of, a lot of different... Uh, yeah, just a lot of different eyes. I've been on big committees, you know, and sometimes they're not, um, sometimes they do get too big. So I'm, I'm hesitant. So I would, I would, uh, you know, I can withdraw those, those thoughts from two weeks ago or three weeks ago and putting community members on there and having the 11 of us do it. Okay. And the five of us being that final vote, I think that's really important. I think that's really important, and, um, and remembering that we already we already represent the community, and we get lots of feedback. I mean, it's not like we're not getting feedback. It's not like we don't know what the community is thinking. We do, and um, so I've said enough. That's, that's Thank you. My, my take. So, I I would like to say first of all, um, in doing some research. I brought it up and it was unclear to me. I just want to make sure that anyone, if there's anyone on the board, and I would like a clear yes or no, if anyone is planning to uh, apply for the position and or be considered as an interim. Uh, my research has shown that it would clearly show a conflict of interest if anyone were interested and were a part of even deciding um, the hiring process. So. I know that I am not, so I would appreciate if other board members. I can chime in right away. All due respect, Eric, it's it's not a it's not a nine to five. It's not a nine to five job. I'm sorry, but it's not a not a position I have. It's not on my bucket list. I, I answered that pretty uh, pretty adamantly last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting that you bring that up because um, probably a week and a half to two weeks ago. It came to my attention that uh, prevailing rumor going around Morristown was that I was looking to apply for either the administrator's job or the interim job. And um, although uh, if I was maybe 20 years younger, <laughs> um, I might consider that. But I can uh, uh, very clearly say that's a big hell no. I'm <laughs> interested in doing that. I uh, certainly appreciate the ability to serve on the board, but I do not have aspirations of moving up the food chain. Thank you. I just I felt like for the uh, our residents, it would be for transparency's sake. The, the more the clearer we are about this, 
because that is some of the concern from past um, processes. Um, I will then go on to say that <clears throat> I am um, very clearly feel that um, we need to have two committees, um, one of which are our um, department heads and Judy um, and us separate um, because I think this is a we're asking someone basically to come in and you know administrator but it's it's nine thousand or nine million dollar that we're dealing with and that's significant and I think we need to take our time I also firmly believe that we should have uh, <clears throat> for the sake of transparency uh, and what has happened in the past that it we make some changes and I have advocated for two uh, town uh, residents and I had suggested that we use two justice of the pieces because they too were elected officials and um, they there is no issue at all with um, you know um, you know um, I'm blanking on the word here but um, you know they're sworn to secrecy <coughs> confident thank you confidentiality um, because they're running our elections um, and so because I think they two justice of the pieces really would bring in uh, a certain level of expertise and um, just a different perspective um, because I think we have our individual but we're still a select board and the staff and um, Judy uh, department heads <clears throat> are coming from a different place so I really think they would be a very neutral um, different perspective and one could sit on one committee one could sit on the other for the init for the initial interviews and then once we pare it down then it comes back to us um, that's my feeling I feel like that would um, we could do that and I believe that's completely legal uh, and I think it's just a win-win for all um, to include more uh, we've had people who have offered to have a separate uh, you know a third party uh, budgeting we have people who are very interested and I think any way that we can engage the community and um, just be very transparent and cannot cannot be a bad thing and uh, but I'm adamant about having two two separate committees for the initial interviews um, and and then <clears throat> paring it down to for the final interviews I think having 11 people is just not even I, I don't want to consider 11 people in one in one interview process that just seems completely I've never seen it it's completely unruly seems unruly to me and, and not really fair to the poor applicant to have you know 11 people coming at them at one time that's my thing Travis <clears throat> I mean I've got serious concerns about not engaging the public in some fashion here um, I think we should still move forward with two members of the public, whether it's justices of the peace or Don had mentioned in the past, some of the applicants that uh, applied for the select board vacancy. I think we can talk about how that happens, but I think it's a really big mistake to not involve the public in the current political landscape we're in. Uh, if we don't want them on the interview panel, then maybe we can do some sort of meeting, you know, meeting with community leaders with a couple of finalists outside of the interview process. Maybe we do, like I brought up last time, some sort of public presentation where the candidates, a couple of finalists present to the public. The public has to be involved to some extent. I just think it's a really big mistake if we don't do that. Um, I would agree with Laura too. You know, I've brought up the idea of split committees um, as well. I agree 11 is a pretty, pretty unruly number for an interview panel. Um, I think there's ways we could break it up, whether it's a citizen panel, an employee panel, a board panel, something like that. I think we could talk about that structure. Um, so I guess my, my two big concerns are not engaging the public and having 11 people on one interview team <clears throat> questioning someone all at the same time. That doesn't seem like a particularly effective way to do it. Chris? Um, I've been through the hiring process for a town manager uh, in my previous life. Um, we chose not to include um, people outside uh, the elected board um, other than department heads 
in the interview process. Um, I agree with Don that um, council, you know, people sit on city councils, commissions, you know, boards of select boards, um, village trustees. They are, you know, appointed by the by the uh, community for the community to make just these types of decisions. Um, I don't see the inherent value in including two more public voices in that. Um, ultimately, it becomes a five-person decision, ultimately. I think that the department heads with Sarah and uh, Judy involved in it, they have bring a different perspective than we would um, to that interview process. Um, I do uh, strongly feel that you, the, the proposed 11 um, Folks that will be on this panel would start the process and finish the process together so that everybody's hearing the same thing at the same time from all of the uh, all of the candidates. Um, I think that um, I don't think it's unruly in any way to approach it that way. Um, it's I've seen it work very well. Um, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work again uh, in this situation. Um, so I, um, I would respectfully disagree with um, Laura and Travis. I understand, you know, their perspective on it, um, but I just have not to agree with it. Yeah, I mean, I can say I've also gone through a manager hiring process um, that was run by a firm that was hired by Essex. Uh, we did do split groups. We did a citizen panel. We did an employee panel. We did a board panel. Um, and actually, I was talking to our town manager about this <clears throat> earlier today. I forgot we also did a. Uh, sort of a peer affinity panel where um, several managers in Chittenden County were also invited to sit down and meet with the candidates for Essex and vet them from their perspective as managers in the area. Was this when when the town and the and um, Essex Junction Exit town were were splitting. So this was a brand this new was brand we new were, process. This was when we were merging. Merging. Um, so, so we actually hired a unified manager for the yeah. town and the village at that point in time. So there was a it was a brand new process for both both the We the have had one manager for like thirty years. So yeah, it was the first time in thirty years we've hired a manager. Yeah. Yeah. A little different. Um, I I too I think that we the five of us have been elected by the public and can serve as the citizens to represent the town on the committee. Um, 11 is not unruly. Uh, we had maybe nine on the last one. I could be wrong. I haven't added them up in my head, but it was really close to that number. I think Paula was the only one probably not there from the, from the um, committee. And it went very well, just the way people <coughs> were asking questions. And I had an interesting, I was hoping Sarah was um, going to be joining us. Um, she doesn't have to be here, but had an interesting conversation with her about her uh, process with Stowe when they were work hiring the new town manager. And she had picked out three of the people that she, she ranked them, one, two, three. And those were her top three people. Those and after the, the inter- town oh, clerk. oh, I'm sorry, town, town clerk. clerk, sorry. And <laughs> after the process, her one, two, three changed positions drastically. So she had been on a different, if it had been split groups of people, her, she would not have been able to have that opportunity to, to see these people in a different light. So her, her, her uh, process was very interesting to me. I've sat on uh, hiring committees and it's been the same committee that I've been on the town part of it. I've been in my profession. And we've had a variety of people sitting at the table and it, it's worked well with having um, different outlooks from the people who were directly affected by the person in that position. So I would, I would agree with Don and Chris and support them on their process. I can say, you know, I hire municipal employees weekly and we do do split teams. I think you get, you get the perspective on the first round. Typically it, typically it becomes pretty clear with the first round panel, you know, who's, who's the top two or three candidates out of that group. And then it leaves it to the, to the next group, typically consisting of the manager um, as well to make sort of that final decision. I, I've seen it work both ways. And I would say, I, I also spoke with Sarah and uh, it was interesting because the process that she did with the clerk 
uh, and the hiring process of a, the clerk was multiple meetings. I mean, she was talking about it was it went on for quite a while, and so it wasn't. And I got the impression that it was from you that it wasn't. And my understanding that wasn't her, what I was saying. Yeah. The, uh, well, I. And that's why I'm just saying, reiterating that in talking with her, there was a whole series. She she was actually talking about how involved it was, and then I think she ended up saying that there were like five or six interviews that they went through for this clerk position. So it was, which I thought was interesting, um, that it was such a detailed, and that they were interviewed so many times. So that that's part of my concern too is. I, I simply don't think two, and again, I've hired for massive companies and multi-billion dollar companies, and I just, I've, I have a fear that having two interviews is simply not enough. I don't think we're talking so, about that. I think we're talking about the makeup of the committee right now. Time. Yeah, so, yeah. well, that's, if you have everybody at one time, that's kind of my concern is. I think the, so, I think okay. the structure of the interview process will, Come later. This is the structure, just of the committee. Like, what what's right. the committee going to look like? Yes, I understand. But it, it, you, you mentioned Stowe, and Sarah was invited to participate in that as an expert in the clerk field. What would mm -hmm. everyone's thoughts be on some sort of like peer affinity group to reaching out to Charles Stafford and Stowe, to Waterbury, to Cambridge, to Johnson, seeing if some of their town managers and town administrators would be willing to to provide some of their insight to us on the candidates. I think it's. Also, I don't know. Because we have, a, we'd like to have someone in place if we have a good candidate in place by the end of the month. So it's a matter of not the end of this month, yeah, in the gotcha. June, and uh, I, I we're think under that, a time frame. I think, that that, I think that the possibility of that has some real merit. Um, you know, and that would be you know part two of this uh, new yeah. business uh, conversation. You know, we could s settle the structure of the hiring committee, and then, um, as a group, you know, really begin to drill down to, um, you know, whether there would be a peer, you know, at least a peer interview. Yeah. I, I certainly would not. I, mean, I would certainly be open to that conversation, Travis. Yeah. Um, you know, they would bring us a separate professional perspective mm -hmm. to that process. Um, and, uh, and I'm assuming also that um, if a candidate outside the interview process had specific questions for Eric, that that would be an option for them to um, discuss as well. Me to speak to Eric. To speak yeah. to Eric, yeah. yeah. I mean, if there were specific questions right. outside of an interview process, right. that yeah. would be appropriate for them to right. ask him specific questions about the... Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to say, I wouldn't say, yes, let's do that, and, not, and then not be able to do it. Yeah. To, to just... I, I raise it now because we're talking structure of committee, and if we're going right. to include right. some town town managers, town administrators, some other committees, I would assume we'd have to make that part of this, this yes. motion. And that would be, yeah. And I think if as long as it's an open kind of like that, it, it's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. That if that if we can't do it, then yeah. I mean, if they all say no, then we can't do it. Yeah. But, or if they're not available. Yeah. yeah. There's there's lots of options there though. So. Yeah. I'm just wondering too, about how the we're saying if we don't take on a community member, but we're taking on someone who's not part of our community. I mean, I how want to include that? community members how and try and come up with other okay. options, since it sounds like Laura and I are going to be outvoted on that one. <clears throat> so I was just wondering if we, did, so you're saying a community, community members as well as someone from another uh, town, another town manager or town administrator, is that what you're saying? My preference would be, I think, just to include the community in some regard, but as an alternative, if, if that's not going to pass, which it sounds like is the case, could we consider at least having some sort of outside vetting process i think that would at least help with the you know the public perception that it's not just the board making this decision well we they'd be they'd be consulting with us but correct. we generally yes. have we have to make it yes decision. correct yes so if i you know could make a suggestion um, we sort of wandered from the structure of the committee itself to the process of the committee um, I would prefer to, you know, 
if there's people in the public that would like to say something about the structure of the community, um, that would be welcome. When we start talking about the interview process, I'd like to hear if Paula has something that she would like to share at that point as a separate discussion. But in terms of the, uh, and, and if she would like to share something about the hiring committee itself, I would welcome that too. Yeah. Or so maybe she, she wants, maybe she wants to weigh in on this, the first right. question here so first. Saying, so if she has something that she'd like to share about the structure, which is really what we're talking about, that would be, I think this would be an appropriate time. Would you, do you have something you'd like to say, Paul? I don't really have anything more to share than what I previously shared. Before you start, I know when I was watching the video before, well, hardly anybody. <laughs> it isn't just you. So when you come up and, and introduce yourself and stand as close as you can to the microphone, that would be helpful. Thanks. Apology. I don't speak very loud. Um, I think that the number is large. I agree. Um, I, I think that the involvement from the community members is concerning to me with the confidentiality piece because we don't have any rules to govern that. Um, so that's my stance. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll say I agree from an HR perspective that it's a, a dangerous path to go down, but I also have concerns over the political environment and where that's going to mm -hmm. shift if we don't. And maybe it's just a matter of being upfront with applicants that. You now, there is no guarantee to confidentiality here. That's just, it, you're applying for a very public facing position. It, it's, not, it's not ideal from an HR perspective. I would not do that with any other position. This is not any other position. And that is also why I highly recommended uh, using the Justice of the Pieces. Um, that's a elected positions and they're handling, we elected them to handle our elections. Um, so I think they, they would be ideal candidates and it's a very, very diversified group there that we would have lots of, and I, uh, I do believe that there are uh, several of them that would want to be involved and uh, have already expressed wanting to be involved in different aspects of committees and things. So. You can say it is, it, it happens, you know, Essex Town did, well, I should say Essex Town and Village at the time did the citizen panel. Winooski did citizen presentations at board meetings with the finalists. Um, and Essex Junction post-separation when they hired their own city manager did public facing presentations. The two finalists were in the paper. There were vials on both in the paper. Yeah, let's let's stay, stick with the structure and we can get to the process. I, I mean, I think this weighs into the structure because we're talking about whether or not to include residents. We also took a lot of heat when we did the um, applicants for the select board open position and how we went about choosing that person. So choosing a BCA or justice of the peace or somebody who already sat, interviewed for the select board position as being one of those options. Again, we're still opening ourselves up to a lot of scrutiny, like why did you pick them? Why didn't you yeah. pick this other person? So it's. We're in a no-win situation. We're going to take this. a lot more scrutiny if we include yeah. nobody. And I think again, if all five of us are deciding, um, well, I, and know, I don't know that we can decide an executive session on that. I don't know. Uh, on which part? <laughs> <laughs> on um, using a justice of the peace, um, and you know, and again, I say two um, um, in the process of hiring the um, administrator. Just bringing in outside folks. Uh, is, are you talking about deciding what the committee makeup is in the executive so, session? So let's say if the, the select board decided to go with two people from the community. Right. So we have to, we have to pick two people. Right. Do we put names in a hat? Do we do it, do we have to do it in open session or can it be in executive session? I would say it's a very public process. I don't know which exception of open meeting law you'd be using to right. go do that. I don't think there is one. Yeah. I think you have to do it in public environment. Right. I guess I just want to say, I mean, the suggestion's been made that we need lots of different perspectives. And you know, that, that, can, that can go a long way. You know, I can go up to 13 people, 15 people, 17 people. No matter what we do, we're not going to 
have every perspective represented. I think 11 perspectives is pretty darn good. That's a lot of people. And the more people, you know, we, we got the five of us, I'm going to say it again, we're elected officials. The town has voted us in to sit here to make these decisions. We got six very qualified people representing the town, representing the government, the working parts of the government that we don't, we don't really see. We're not sitting in the chair from nine to five every day doing all the work. That's a lot of perspectives. And the more perspectives we put in here, the less efficient this gets. So, to me, that's a good number. And we're talking about the individuals that are going to hear these interviews. These are, if it ends up being 11, these are the 11 people that are going to sit there and listen to each one of these individuals answer our questions. Um, that's that's a big group. I think that's plenty of perspectives. I, I, I think there's, there's diversity on this select board right now, and there's diversity among those six people that represent our, our town departments. I, I think we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna hear plenty. Yeah. Um, and my guess is we're probably going to get some public input over the next seven to ten days about suggested things that we should be asking. I, I just have the sneaking suspicion. That well, that might happen. I'm very clear. And um, well, why wouldn't you? And and we're going to be that's going to that's going to taint our questions. There's no doubt about it. That's going to taint what we what we bring into in, into that meeting. So I think at some point you've got to stop. At some point you've got to just say, okay, we've got to trust. In my opinion, those eleven people to make this decision, and we can add to it. And uh, but I'm, I'm I'm not sure. I, I mean, part of me thinks that eleven is too much. Oh, I agree. And, and I've said that multiple times. And I mean, Judy's right too. Then we get into the whole mess of who we choose. We got to get on with this. You know, we need this town needs a town administrator. We 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 got to get out there. We don't need to muddy the water with one more layer of decision making, like who those individuals are going to be. Um, and then you got to debate it in public. And yeah, we're going to debate it in public. We're going to pick those individuals in public. And it becomes subjective. I, 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 I just feel like, I think we've got 11 good people right now. Well, 10. I'm not sure I'm in that good category, <laughs> but I mean, you got 10 anyway. Okay, so. I, just, I want to be devil's advocate here because <laughs> I specialize in uh, crisis management and projection. Are we going to run into, do we need to consider if we have town employees who are not residents of Morristown? Just again, devil's advocate, please don't come after me. I just want everything out there. Why would that be an issue? I'm just, just throwing it out there because we're hiring a manager or administrator. And I'm not saying it is duty. I'm just trying to get in front of it that, it, that we discuss it, that it wasn't something we didn't think about. And I, I don't necessarily, I don't think it's an issue. I'm just, I know that we have several department heads that are not residents of Mooresville. I just don't want backlash. That's all. I think it's a good question. I also don't yeah. think it's an issue yeah. because we're putting those six people there because those six people are going to work under this individual. It would be like going up to the high school and saying, you know, those, all the teachers that don't live in Morristown, yeah. we don't want you involved in in hiring the principal or the superintendent. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that just wouldn't make sense. I don't right? live in Essex and I played a huge part in hiring the town manager. Perfect. I just, yeah. I just that wanted it out. That doesn't give me yeah, no, that's a good yeah. question, and, but I, I don't think it's pertinent. But, I, mean, I would agree. I just wanted to cover all our bases. Okay. Any other comments? No, I think it's... I, I mean, I think you all know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to beat it to death. You know, it's... It's incumbent on this board, it's the legislative process that communities go through that you have 
folks that are sitting here as community representatives um, to make all kinds of decisions and hiring a town manager or town administrator is part of that responsibility. Um, I have not heard any compelling, I mean, I certainly understand the different perspectives. I'm not compelled to change my mind on this. Um, I would like to hear from the public if they would like to chime in. Um, and then I think we. I wanted to wait till everybody had a chance yeah, to speak. And then first. I think yeah. that we can make a decision. Okay. I know Tony had his hand up first. I know yeah. I don't, Tony, I know I don't have to have to tell you to stand close. Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. The taxes went up double. Anyways, I back up Laura. I think everybody on the board should be from Morristown. Thank you. Well, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, I think they should yeah. be. Uh, okay, I, I okay. posed the question. I just want to be clear that uh, I am okay with, if we have uh, t department heads who are from out of state, the fact that they are working here, I trust their judgment. I want to, so I just, that I just. This wasn't relevant to the agenda item, but taxes doubled or appraised value doubled? It's double, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Praise value. I'd like to, uh, Donovan, on um, Zoom, you've had your hand up for a while. Nancy. Unmute. Yes, yes. This, is, this is Nancy Donovan. And I would like to highly encourage that you have two citizens on the, on the board. Um, I feel like there needs to be more representation and more looking at. I've been on interview boards where 11 is not an uh, obscene number. And I think there are more input will give you a better candidate. They don't have to be speaking and asking questions, but they need to be there to observe. Thank you. Alex Sear, and I'm not sure that I entirely understand the uh, split committee proposal as someone who's never hired anyone for anything. Um, but I was wondering, is different remits are sort of envisaged for the two proposed committees, or if one is sort of thought of as a screening committee for the other? And I hope that if the board decides to um, go with the split committee approach, it makes it very clear what the differences are between the two committees or more committees. I think that's, we decided that's going to be in the next discussion for process. Right, right. Good to hear it. Hopefully your question will be answered. Yes. If it isn't, let's know. Christy. <laughs> Um, I know one of the things that the school did when they were hiring a superintendent was they narrowed the field down to two candidates and they had each candidate do a video answering the same questions, which was really effective. And it gave the community an opportunity to see what the pool looked like once it had been narrowed down. And um, so everybody got to see and then fill out questions. You can you know email your questions into the board. I trust you. We elected you. I, I don't necessarily feel like we need to. I mean, you're our, you're part of our community. Each one of you live in town, so you're our community representatives already. Um, but if you want to involve the community, I think videos of the top two or something that everybody could have access to would be helpful. I think it would be hard to narrow the field down to a couple of community members that you're going to add, and I think that that would be controversial and maybe even harder than <laughs> hiring a new town administrator. Yeah. So. Now, Chrissy, thank you, because I did see those videos, and that was um, very interesting. Yes, it was they were very, very, very informative. Yeah. But it was totally transparent. Everybody could access them. It wasn't just you know, two people representing, I and mean, how are you gonna find two people in this community that are gonna equally represent all of us? If, you know, they, people are from different political persuasions, have different things that are valuable and important and priorities to them. I think that it would be hard to pick two community members. Where were those videos posted? Uh, on the school website. 
Were they filmed by like the HR department, or how did they? No. You couldn't call the school. I think the, I think the individuals had to film themselves. Had to make it themselves. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That, that might be interesting. a way to. And it was very because it was um, wasn't very it wasn't threatening because it, it was a very safe environment for them and um, it, they weren't in front of a bunch of people and yeah I, and it, I think you really got a clear picture of that person. That's how I felt when yeah. I saw them. You might have 20 candidates. You're going to somehow narrow the field down to a couple that are going to be finalists. And those are the people that the community should be able to see and have an opinion about. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. It is, yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, it kind of takes us out of the mix, too, in a way, because yeah. they're responsible for doing their own production. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a really interesting. Go ahead. <clears throat> So the reason that Tell us who you are first. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's good to be there. <laughs> At Lowenton, Morristown. Um, so just saying the unnecessary, the reason that you go through a complex hiring process, I mean, you could just go out and hire someone and start paying, and you get the luck of the job. It's just like a doctor, a therapist, a plumber, whatever. You try to qualify that process and get the best one you're able to find in the time you have <clears throat> that you can afford it. I mean, this doesn't really mean saying, but maybe it does. The protocol of hiring is a skill. If you go to Harvard Business School or Wharton or Tufts or a whole bunch of them, you can take classes to learn how to do that. There's a lot of standardization to that. Um, quantity is the last of participants is the last thing I would think about. I, I know some people who could introduce me to some people who could just by themselves do a fabulous job. They've hired CFOs and you know big companies. We're not going to have one of those. Do you have? Can you? Can you? Uh, like? Can I just on, proceed? Yep. Yeah, can you? But you have to stay on the structure of the committee. Will you be speaking on that? I, I'll say this and I'm done. It's, all right, let me qualify myself first. Looking at me at my stage in life, you wouldn't believe that I've hired 100 to 150 people over 30 years of owning a business. Um, people that I don't even remember in this town, some people that you'd recognize. So I have a great deal of hiring experience. And I didn't always use it because I didn't have to answer to anybody, which is not a good idea. You should always answer to someone. And so one thing I do know is if I had to design something effective for a high level of hire, I wouldn't know how to do it. There's other people in this town who are interested in participating. And I thought we sort of might be headed there to people who might have some ability um, with personnel management at a high level to do that. I had suggested David Yakubo, who's interested in doing it, Sarah Waterman, and since I haven't asked him, I won't give the name, but somebody with a whole lot of like, education and experience in corporate management um, is someone else I might add. I'll bet there's more. Thank, thank you, Thinking Ed. about the staff, I need to finish this, and I want to get it on the record. I'm sorry. I hope you're it, has to, it has to be about the structure of what we're talking about. That's exactly it. It's about bringing other people into the process. Not 11, not any particular number, just someone whom you can trust to actually know the protocol, which is done in a number of stages. It's done over a period of time. There's numerous interviews, and there's ways to interview them. There are questions to ask. Your process needs a scoring system. We're not, you know, we're not talking about that. We're talking about just the structure of the committee. That's what I'm talking about. No, you're not. I want to, I'm explaining why you, I want to bring townspeople in. I'll add to that that I'm very skeptical of having any of the staff in a determinative process. I think of council to give their opinions, bring them in, have them, in, have them meet with not so much interviews to meet with the, the candidates, perhaps the finalists. Um, 
but there needs to be some expertise that actually understands a uh, hiring process when it's, a, when it's an employee of this level. And I don't see anything, I don't see anyone speaking in a way that even suggests that thinking so far. Um, not to mention the serious problem of rushing this. This should take as much time as it takes. Period. It should take as, the, the job ad should be open and you should say open until filled. You may apply until this job is filled. Uh, that's not an uncommon job okay. ad. Well, we, I heard you said you heard you talk about the structure about you're you're not happy with uh, having employees on the committee and you think it should be open to a few more that's people the, in the, the public. That's what I have to say. Okay, you know, we're, we're, we're going to stay on the structure. Methods, you can learn how to do this, and I don't know. I'm, all I'm hearing is quantity, how many people. You could have one, maybe two, and, and really ace it. You could have a hundred and have a zoo. Right. It's a question of to what extent do the people involved understand what they're doing and, and actually have had some practice and expert teaching in this? Right. I mean, it yeah. happens. You know, there's, there's people in this town that could supply you with that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. And I do want to just say quickly, you've got two municipal HR directors. Uh, you have two municipal HR directors on this panel. You have Chris, who has okay. been on the select board, who has hired a manager. I do take a little offense to the, the insinuation that there's no one qualified okay. I mean, on the panel. You don't need to take offense to this. Not what this is about. I mean, if you have that, perhaps you would actually write a protocol based on your training. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Is anyone else? I just want to say to Ed that we oftentimes don't agree, but I always appreciate his perspective. Yes. I think that is the little hand up. Um, it's the cursor. Sorry. Is it, okay. I just want to make sure. Uh, thank you. Okay. It sounds. Okay. I guess uh, my name is Tom Flee, and I, I guess I'm talking as long. You guys have made the decision you're not going to let uh, town folks on this on this board. And, and confidentiality was mentioned. You get you get those those folks there. They run with their confidentiality, so that's really not an issue. If you get the justice of the peace, and they're very fine people, they're very bright people, and they're in the involved in the community. By not doing this, you know, we're we're going back right back. I think that you're excluding the public again. Four of you have been voted in. Four of you. And you may be voted in next year, but, but only four. Two more people on this board, town folks, to have some sort of, of input would be a great value, not only on hiring the TA, but getting select board in the community back together work together. Thank you, That's Tom. All I have. Okay. So oh, okay. <coughs> Tom Smith, Morristown. Um, we voted for you. We trust you. <coughs> I don't think somebody outside is gonna have a better opinion than you guys are gonna have. Otherwise we wouldn't put you in the place where you are now. I think adding more people, money's the water. It, Creates, creates confusion, and people need to be clear and precise and need to take action. By adding more layers of difficulty is only gonna slow the process down and create more questions. I agree with with, uh, with, with you guys, and uh, I think the 11 is more than enough. Uh, if that person can't handle being talked to by 11, maybe they shouldn't be hired. <coughs> I've been on boards with about 25 people, and if you can't handle the heat, then maybe you shouldn't be in the kitchen. So I think 11 people are fine, and I agree with your, with your decisions, whatever it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Toronto Morrisville. I agree with Tom. Thank you. Well, that was the best speech Sorry, of the night. <laughs> thank you. What did you just say? Tom. 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 Or <laughs> 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 
until it's probably what my throat, so maybe you can just point to me and say I don't understand what you're saying. But when you start talking about all five members have been elected and need to be on this committee, I totally agree. You all folks represent a certain segment of our community. But as proven in the last five or six months, there's another segment of our community that doesn't necessarily agree with you totally. And I think it would prove to be beneficial when you do hire somebody that there is a representation on the committee that represents that other segment. That's it. Thank you. Okay, I see no other input. Anybody else from the board? Are we ready for a vote? I need a motion. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. The motion. I'll make a motion that the structure of the hiring committee for Morristown. We need to rescind our previous. Did we already do I thought that? we did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think we did okay. that before the discussion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion that the structure of the hiring committee for Morristown's new town administrator be composed of five select board members presently on the board and to include Jason Luno, our chief of police. Paul Beatty, our HR director, Tina Sweet, our finance director, Judy Alberry, our administrative assistant, Kevin Barrows, our superintendent. And who am I forgetting? Sarah Haskins. And Sarah Haskins, our town clerk. And Judy Alberry. Yes, she, he said that. Oh, he did. Yes. Yeah. So that's your motion? That's my motion. I would second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, motion passed. Uh, item number two under new business, discuss TA interview process. Would, would we like to have Paula come up and speak to us? And Paula, would you be interested? Well, the media HR director, I just want to say, I come to these meetings with like so much energy, and halfway through them, I just feel depleted from listening to certain things. Um, I do have to say, Travis, thank you for speaking up. I've probably over my years been involved in hiring over 100 people plus, so um, I feel like I do know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Um, so I was going to make a recommendation this evening um, because we have 11 applicants um, so far. Seven are um, out of state, foreign state. Um, to ask one of the select board, I was actually going to ask if Travis would be willing to do this, um, be the person that I share those um, applications with first. Um, I'm looking at them and I'm kind of scoring them. Um, I did create a scoring sheet that I will share with you. Um, I've done scoring in the past with um, higher level positions. Sorry, I'm kind of frustrated by this stuff. Um, to just, because I'm looking at them and I may see four candidates that I feel are, meet the qualifications where Travis or someone else may have an opinion of, you know, no, they're not exactly. So just having that second set of mm -hmm. eyes, um, I currently see three um, out of the 11 that mm, I would say are a maybe. Um, so just wanted to have that other person to kind of work with. And then once we, we created the deadline, now we've extended it to June 2nd. Um, again, the moving it's a moving target. It really depends on the um, pool of candidates you get. You know, we could have 10 days into this and have 10 really strong applicants, you just never know. So right now I would say I want to extend the date again um, because of the applicants that we have to this, um, to this point. Um, 
So starting there with Travis, if you'd be willing to, and the board approves that, um, and then determining um, out of those, if we say, yep, we're ready, or no, we're not, then I would send out um, the resumes to all of you, plus the other individuals. I did send out the questions um, to all of you. I think in all, we had like 36 questions. I think we have a, a wonderful list of questions. Um, and then the process from there is, you know, we all get together, but I think if we have it structured appropriately with 11 people, it can run really smooth. Um, somebody has to be in charge. Somebody has to create and establish that process of how those interviews, who's asking questions. I do it with the police department, do it with the highway. You know, names are by questions. It can run really smooth with 11 people. Um, and then, as I, I think I shared with you guys, the timeline, you know, we, we narrow it down. Everyone picks, you know, six to 10 applicants. We narrow it down um, to those. We interview, we break it down to the two or three. Um, we do the background checks. And, and then it, if you, the select board, decides to be that, you know, turning factor, then you, you make that decision. So that's where I'm at. So, um, I do a timeline. I have a timeline. I shared in my email to all of you, um, but I wasn't going to share that until we release the deadline. Um, so, um, so we're look right now. The deadline is June second. It is. And you're you're asking for an, an extend. Mm -hmm. And what what date are you thinking? Um, again, I, I think you know I've been trying to keep it like a two week increment mm -hmm. because I don't want to see you know individuals that have applied in that first that first two weeks is a fear. Oh, right. Um, you know, okay. So I, I, I've directed emails to these individuals to let them know that we've extended the deadline. Um, but again, it's that, it's that pool, you know, Travis, from being in HR, you know, we could we could extend it another two weeks, we could extend it 30 days. And, and you could lose a, We could lose candidates, right. or we could, that could be the time period where we have incredible candidates that have the qualifications. Um, so, some feedback from you. I don't want to make that decision without the support from the select board. Um, I also wanted to talk about um, an interim um, as well. Um, I did receive some information from um, an individual who had shared a uh, retired uh, town administrator um, from a neighboring town that it may be worth reaching out to this individual to see if he'd be willing to do that until we find um, a candidate. So I think that's another conversation that we need to have. Um, I also did, again, watch, uh, I'll share, I got an email from a community member about hiring through VLCT um, and you know, having VLCT do a mm -hmm. process for us. I reached out to them on May, uh, May 10th, um, and they do not have any staff available to do that. So I asked if they knew of outside entities that could do that. I do have three names. I contacted one of them. Um, I think it was, again, like on May 11th, um, and got some pricing from this individual, and it's between nine and $11,000 to have them do the search. Um, with $1,500 um, for advertisement. They did share that because I've done the scoring sheet, I've created the questions, um, I have done some advertisement that it could become, you know, it could be less, but I'm not, I'm not sure what that number is. So again, that's an option if that's, you know, the avenue that you want to take. That's where I'm at at this point. Could I ask a question, Paula? Sure. Uh, it seems VLCT um, basically directs you to a headhunter, which essentially is an HR person. In my experience is, is that for communities that do not have a, a human resources director, that they would take advantage of that because they don't have the ability to do the exactly. things that you know. Yeah. Um, it would seem redundant to me to have another HR person do exactly what you're doing yeah. at an accelerated cost. So I would not be in favor of walking down that path. Okay. Um, I just, just wanted to just, share that. Yeah, That's just good. my personal good, perspective. Yeah. Well, I feel like we also have, we have two of us. Right. Um, you know, you have 
uh, a paid employee and then you have a select board member that have together, I don't know, quite a few years of experience. So and, and I would feel completely comfortable personally you sharing information with Travis. I okay. think it's a huge benefit mm -hmm. for this board to have right. Travis awesome. as a as a member. And I you know, I think that that's uh, an excellent idea and I would so I would wholly support that. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just have a quick clarification on that. So <laughs> you and Travis would be... Just reviewing the applications or resumes, cover letters between the two of us to just make sure that we're both in agreement that yes, you know, these um, candidates meet 60, 75% of the you know qualifications that we're looking for instead of me just being the only individual that's kind of scoring these because um, I I may see something that he's not or vice versa. You're just kind of vetting them, so, of course. Yeah, just basically. Kind of having yeah. a second person yeah. to do that initial review to say yes, we have a solid pool. We're ready to to the deadline is mm. closed. We're ready to move to the next phase, which is um, each individual on the committee picking their six, 10 applicants, and then we meet, we narrow it down, and it's, it's a process, it's gonna take a while. Um, yeah. Laura had a question. I, I have two questions. Um, my first is, um, having lived in lots of other cities and worked in other cities, I would certainly appreciate, I don't need all the resumes, but I would appreciate a list, um, because again, I've lived lots of other places, and. Um, it's very, you know, I don't know that I would know anybody, but I, I, I just would appreciate a list. Well, you would get, you're going to get, you would get a copy of the Yeah, I think resumes. the intent yeah. when we're ready to yeah. go would be to share all resumes with yeah. the yes. entire board. I think oh. Paul is asking so just there. to have. And every time Understood. I get a resume, yeah. send yeah. that to you, that just seems like mm -hmm. oh, somebody's no. going to miss one. Yeah. I, historically, okay. um, it's been the cutoff date, you've identified, you have a solid pool, you send all the resumes or co in cover letter letters out to your committee, okay. and then each of those individuals score those. You get together, you review as a group, you determine the ten or six, whatever we you know are going to use as a cutoff. We do those interviews. We narrow it down to our top two or three. <coughs> we do the second interviews. We do the background checks. Like it's, I don't think the process really changes from. Okay. whether you're hiring from up here to down here it's just would you then my thought was and i don't know you had you had kind of had a timeline set up mm -hmm. and i'm wondering once you two like vetted did the vetting process mm -hmm. would you then reestablish the timeline yeah. because right now it's yeah. it's not really set in stone the timeline would need to fluctuate okay so yeah. that would be good so we're kind of like waiting for that timeline right okay so when we have the may 15th deadline cut off right um, i created a timeline for that then when we moved it to june 2nd i created another timeline okay. that brings interviews out to the third week in june but i didn't share those because i don't need to keep sharing the timeline with you the timeline will be shared once we've identified that we're ready to move to that good next okay phase. good oh that's I just, helpful i just wanted to finish my my questions here so just so we will uh, the five of us will see everyone that's applied. Absolutely. Okay. And then my just a quick comment on headhunters. Um, coming from New York, I have a friend that's a headhunter. Headhunters are very different in the fact that they have an entire pool of people that they uh, pool. You know, <clears throat> so not that I'm saying we should hire one, but it is a little bit different because they have files and files and files of you know applicants who are. Um, uh, highly qualified people, so they don't necessarily have to put out a lot of advertisement. I'm not saying that we need to hire one. I think you're highly qualified, but the you know headhunters have a different a, a different um, set of skills and pool that they pull from. It's, and a, again, different, it's a different metric. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I did ask um, this individual. Um, if he had a, a pool of interim town administrators, and he currently does not, okay. um, he said that's sort of a different process. Mm -hmm. um, I did share the pay range and some information with him. 
Um, and he said, actually, currently, right now, he does have his professional network that he would reach out um, regarding the town administrative as a permanent position. But right now, he didn't even have a pool of that. So I think we're running into that, not just with the town administrator, with all other all positions. positions. Yeah. And this isn't any different than what we hear from all other towns and um, all other businesses. It's, it's a difficult time right now to be hiring. Paul, I just want to say, you know, I'm glad you brought up this idea of, uh, you know, somebody, a, re a retired individual, someone who's had a lot of experience uh, in running a town, whether it's a town administrator or a town manager. That, I mean, ideally, we're going to find someone to replace Eric that's got the experience, that's got the that has all, has the qualities to, to run Morristown. Um, but it, I would, assuming that that doesn't happen, having somebody come in in an interim kind of uh, situation, a retired person, mm -hmm. to come in here for six to nine months, let's say, just throwing out some numbers, mm -hmm. to keep everything moving forward in the right direction. Um, that's certainly, for me, not an unappealing thought. I just think like um, in the first uh, meeting that we had, I, I do think that I've said to all of you, we need to be prepared for the plan B mm -hmm. because yes. although my timelines, and I think that I've expressed this, although there's been some community comments about the timeline that that is a constant moving target and we can move that, we need to have a plan B. We need yes. to have a, somebody potentially, even if it's an internal employee, and thank you for the ICMA, I was reading that actually a couple of weeks ago, that's awesome. Um, but even if it's identifying somebody internally, and right now I think everybody's really overwhelmed with the work that they're doing, but there has to be somebody in place for when Eric leaves. Um, and if we could find a retired individual that has the experience, it may be, and I'm very grateful for the individual for providing me with that information. And you said that you had heard of somebody who might fall into that category? I did. But you haven't reached out to that person yet? I have not. Well, I, for one, <laughs> I, I, wanted, I would... I didn't uh, want to go there unless it was appropriate. I, for one, would ask you to reach out and it's at least information. It doesn't hurt We're to not be making interest. a decision. Mm -hmm. We're not telling that person that they're, they, you know, it's a slam dunk, but... Do we need this in a motion? Option. Does it need to be a motion or not? I don't know. I think I don't it's a so. motion. And even if that person worked, you know, three days a week, it doesn't necessarily need to be presented as a, a full-time job, um, but if they were willing to come in and, and provide management skills, you know, even if it was on a part-time basis, um, that would be a, a significant step forward if it came to that. I absolutely agree. We need a contingency plan. And reaching out to gauge interest of a qualified individual is a great idea. Yes. Yeah. I just want to move forward with that if yeah. you were opposed to the idea. No, no thank, you. thank you. I think it sounds like we're all in agreement with that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Such an individual might even be able to help us with the real, you know, the eventual hiring. Um, there was something else. Do we have to do a motion? I think we do have to do a motion to extend the deadline, right? Yes? No? no? We, we, have a, we, we have don't have to? Pass. Okay, good. Good. If okay. we did extend the deadline, <clears throat> You would suggest that we wait till that deadline is up before we begin interviews, yes. or could we begin interviews? I think we can. Well, before I, that deadline. Well, let Let's see if we went to like June sixteenth. Yeah, let me stop myself. I'm like jumping ahead. Um, I think if we identify at any point that we have a solid pool of individuals, we can say okay. We can still leave the deadline for whatever it may be. Um, and we can start the interviews whenever we determine that we're ready to do so. Okay. Um, because even though you start the interview process, you may have three individuals, they back out and you leave that time frame still open for the opportunity for others to come in. Um, but, yeah. So my only comment would be uh, from an advertising uh, that, would, that Ed mentioned is, you know, if you're paying a lot for print ads, putting a deadline on it 
limits you because then you have to run a whole nother ad. Mm -hmm. um, you we know? still have to run a whole nother ad. So like the News and Citizen and the Stone Reporter, they charge us weekly for our ads. Weekly, um, yes, but. ND charges us for yeah. the applicants. Um, um. ICMA charges yeah. us. No, I understand. Rate, so I don't think that that's a fair, I don't think that. The ads have case. limited time frames too. I mean, you're gonna wanna put the ad up again. Right, uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah. Again, so I think the cost is gonna be what the cost okay. is. Well, uh, I do like the idea of until filled. I, did, I know it's a that's an open and we, door. And we but can absolutely put yeah. that. If that's if we're, we're if paying, that's what you we, choose to do. Especially for digital stuff. We could also do there. something along the lines of this position is open until filled. Preference will be given to applications received before June 16th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that. that's. Yeah. And I, I actually had to do, I did that with um, our uh, highway last because yeah. we wanted mm -hmm. them higher before the winter. Yeah. So it's open till filled for the cutoff date. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Preferred cutoff Preference date, date. Yeah. Preferred. I, yeah. I would like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Question for uh, Travis and Paula. Yeah. Um, is seven days a viable option for advertising since they have uh, you know, a pretty significant footprint digitally yeah. and they have significant um, you know, uh, help wanted ads in their um, in their digital uh, footprint. So I, you know, I don't I don't see continued value in the, in the news and citizen still reporter because of its limited spread. But um, you know, would um, seven days be a viable option? I, I would say them. yes. You know, if I'm if I'm going to use newsprint in Essex, I use seven days. And I can say, I've, uh, having worked in Burlington with lots of big organizations, uh, running an ad in seven days, they get hundreds and hundreds, depending on. Uh, they don't. Most of the businesses, you know, uh, that I know of, big ad agencies and you know, very very large agencies. Um, don't use uh, any of the local or uh, Burlington Free Press. They use pretty much seven days because that's pretty much the go-to. I would actually prefer to do it in a different um, yeah. newspaper because I, I do not feel that um, it's you know, put it out there for two, yeah. three weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's a reporter. We did, we did get an applicant from the reporter. Um, I just feel like that's why in the email to all of you, um, I asked if we could just do it through June 2nd and then be done mm -hmm. with that because I feel like that's sufficient time to be in a local newspaper without any movement. Yeah. Um, yes. And then I like the idea of seven days or friends with the press or something different. I would vote seven days over the free press. I've definitely had better luck with them and I've found I, them to I be quite too. cheaper yeah. as well. Deep, yeah. yeah. And again, they have a huge digital footprint. Yeah. I think yes. they put it on their Twitter and some of their social media too when they, I believe they do. Huge. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, I just throw that out as a thought. It's a good thought. We'll do it. Digger probably isn't. I've never advertised yeah, with them. Not, that's no. not really their. We used to use seven days for less than a lot. Like yeah. all of our ads went in seven days. Seven days is my go to for print ad. Yeah. Good Sounds yeah. good. Any other discussion? No. Right. Any comments from the public? Charles, I will email it to you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. I did. I mean, I did have sort of a just thoughts on the hiring process, generally speaking. Just as I try to wrap my head around a way to still involve the public to some extent, um, so I can just run through this quickly here. Um, so, you know, we've settled on 11 committee members. Um, Paul, I believe you mentioned scoring rubrics for the applicants, right? We'll, we'll see. Yeah. I did. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not loud enough when I have a speaker. I can't hear the back of the room. I do have a scoring sheet that I will share with you yeah. prior to the review of the application to make sure. Yep. Um, and I think I shared some information on it. You know, it talks to their education and their yep. experience in town government. Um, leadership, management, um, construction background, um, all the things that we do um, yeah. you know, from each department has questions about finance, uh, policies, and procedures. And then basically, we look at all your applicants and just score them appropriately. Yep. This is easy to 
when you have 50 yeah. applications to go to this form. Yeah. Um, so I would envision, you know, as, as Paula and I have discussed here, we can sort of do the initial screening um, and get to a sort of a mutual agreement point where we're ready to move forward based off the candidate pool we have. Um, then have all 11 committee members score the applicants. Um, I'm typically hesitant to, to set a number to say we're going to bring in 10, we're going to bring in seven. I find particularly when you're scoring the applicants that usually that comes about naturally. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a max score of 60, you'll see 58, 52, 54, 50, you know, 49, 48, 30. Like there, there, there usually comes about a natural cutoff point. Mm -hmm. I have found when we're doing scoring of applications. Um, and so I'd more so look at it as, you know, what are the tiers? Typically, you'll see like a first tier, a second tier, a third tier just on scores. Um, and that we look at that first tier. I would encourage some sort of real life exercise, sort of essay question type prompt, some sort of written prompt, something where the candidates show their, their professional skills in answering some sort of relevant question, something we've done in Essex. Um, I would think that those essay questions could be something that was spoken about in the interview process. We could have them discuss their prompts after we've read them, how they got there, what thought process went into it, and that could be in addition to the interview questions. Um, after that first round with the 11 committee members, you know, we could talk about narrowing it down to second round interviews. Um, Again, I'd hate to say that that's going to be two, three people. I think, again, that often comes about naturally. You, you know, you often naturally identify a top tier. Um, so I, I'd hate to just put a hard number on it. Um, I would be open with that final group of candidates to doing some sort of like community tour. Maybe we have a staff member bring them around the community, see different businesses, see different areas. That way, these candidates, the finalists, are at least interacting with the public. They're seeing the public, they're seeing the community, they're seeing some of what we have to offer. Um, and that could be, you know, at least a public engagement piece. Um, I think, you know, we do have the department heads pretty heavily involved, but maybe like departmental tours as part of this process with the finalists could be beneficial as well. Bring them to the PD, bring them to the highway garage, bring them to EMS, have them interact with the staff there, see what we do, ask questions about those departments. Um, you know, once we get past all of that, we move into the formal second round interview with the panel. Um, certainly, you know, after that point, the board could either make a decision or we could talk about doing something like was like what was suggested with the video, the video interview questions, I think is a cool idea. Um, so that's, you know, as I say here, Ed, Ed mentioned, you know, lay out a process and laying out a process. That's sort of where my head is going right now in terms of what I think could be sort of a logical process that engages the public, lets the candidates get to know us because an interview is very much us selling ourselves as much as them selling themselves. And I think we really need to try hard to do that. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts are. I'll lay all of that. That was a lot, but I'll lay all of you that out there. think about, talk about that now or think about it? Well, we're talking <laughs> about, a, we're, talking about we're talking that about hiring a process. I'm just that's, wondering that's the if, agenda item. I'm just wondering <laughs> if it's something that, um, that we could like digest because that was a lot. I really like the writing prompt because I think I, I've just been so totally impressed with Eric's writing ability. I mean, it's, yeah. it's blown me away. It's important. In many ways, that he, everything he does, but his writing is outstanding. Yeah. And to have a, um, a writing prompt that's standard for all of the applicants or the, the final three or whatever we're going to pick, maybe just the final people, um, I think is a great idea. Yeah. Can, um, I, can I just add can to that? I, I, I like this a lot. You talk about the first round, you know, once we decide what that top tier is or those, that group that we want to interview, the 11 of us would interview. And then we'd have that second round kind of informal starting off. That's where you talked about going around and visiting the yeah. different departments. And I might also suggest that they come to a select board meeting. Yeah. And they introduce themselves to the public here before that formal second yeah. round so they might come in here maybe we can give them a prompt then as well yeah they come to a meeting and each one of them has five minutes ten yeah. minutes to That's, introduce themselves or yeah. better yet to speak to some issue that we might present to them. Yeah, that's very much where I've been at with like the Winooski example of giving sort of a public presentation. You know, if we're not going to involve the public, I would at least like to engage the public yes. in so some way. We wouldn't do a question and answer time with that, would you? I don't think it needs to be necessarily a back and forth. I think it could be an introduction, a little background on themselves. Maybe we do give them a prompt of some kind to speak on. I don't, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a back and right. forth with the public, but just an opportunity to 
for the present public. themselves. And it could be in a meeting, it could be via a video. It, I think there's gotta be some way to get the candidates out there to the public. Could we, is it, um, to me, this is something also that the, the entire interview committee could make a decision on, not just us. I, I also, I would say, I mean, part of the whole hiring process is, I mean, this individual is going to be in the public. This individual is going to be sitting in that chair Correct. right there. This individual is going to be dealing with the public. We need to see the how time. they deal with the public. Yeah. So how they, how they represent themselves, how they, how they present themselves in public is going to be, it's going to be really important to me. Me I'm too. Sure it is for all of us. Yeah. I would totally agree with that. I think interactive, um, because people can sell and pitch themselves. I mean, that's marketing. But to see the interactive of how they relate to people, mm -hmm. um, and I think is really key. Thank so how we involve that in the process, I'm not quite sure. But so, yeah, I go back to my other question: is is discussing this? Maybe you and Paula banging that out a little bit, but maybe with the whole interview team is that too much, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think it's really important that um, those are great ideas. Travis has, again, done similar things. Um, for maybe five of you to make that determination, because yeah. then when we're adding another group of people with different ideas, yeah. then we're going to have even more ideas, and we're trying to come up with what that looks like. Uh, uh, so my recommendation would be for the five of you to make that decision as to if they're going to be um, doing videos or okay. writing essays or in the community, um, and then the the employee panel sort of follows that and knows what the expectation is and and just supports your decisions. All right. Could you? I'd rather have to see those in writing so I have time to oh, think yeah. about. I just typed it all out. So I'm so wondering if we can together. like put that on an agenda for another meet because we we're not. We're not talking about this. God, what are we talking about? Can I make a suggestion on that piece? Yes. Sure. I'm not please. necessarily sure you need a vote for your process. Right. I think you need an agreement between the five right. of you about yes. process. So Travis coming up with a pretty comprehensive uh, direction here, if he circulated that, yes. you each make maybe notes on it or something and then, and then put it back. But I don't know the hiring process, but that, that, what he's talking about there needs a, a vote. No, but I wanted some time to digest uh, it. No, I understand that. I'm just yeah. saying to bring it back to another meeting. You don't have another public meeting until the 20th, other than the yeah. budget discussion on the 1st, and that's really not the intent of that meeting. Okay. So you're pushing it way out there. So that's why I'm encouraging you to look at this as you form your committee, you now you're working on the process. Structure and process seems to have been well received by the board here. If he puts it out for you to digest in a written format, and you folks come to an agreement on it, then have it in a format we can put on the web page, uh, get it out on front porch form, let folks know this is what the process looks like. I just, I don't, I'm not sure there's a legal requirement for you to, to right. have a motion and a right. vote on, yeah. on that piece. Yeah, I didn't want to discuss it tonight just because. This seems like a lot, and I'd like yeah. to have some time to think about it. I'm happy June to put it in writing. June 20th seems like a long way away. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can't wait that long. I think what we're talking okay. about now, maybe we, we decided not to have the meeting on June 5th because this room's not available, mm -hmm. the election's the next day. But later that week, Sarah's not here, but we, should, we, we usually get this room cleaned up pretty darn quick. Um, could we have a meeting that Thursday, which would be the eighth? The eighth. I mean, is it really? I don't know if it's necessary. I think I think if Travis types up that list, and we all respond to Travis, one on one, yeah. one on one, about well, I, our thoughts on that. And, I, and I'd like, really like to see Travis and Paul collaborate yeah. on. That's where my head was at as well. Where the process goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that Travis has made excellent. Uh, suggestions tonight. Um, they can put together a proposal for the board to take a look at. I think that we can probably come to a consensus, maybe outside a meeting, to uh, to move forward with that process. And if everybody's in agreement, then again, it could go out for public notification so that people would understand what the board is in terms of transparency. The board was yeah. you know, looking at. Yeah. Does that seem to make sense? 
Yes. I think so. And yeah. we can, I mean, we can share it with the candidates too. So they're aware of, you know, what the For process sure. looks like. They're aware of the public engagement aspects. Right. Um, I'd be happy to work with you on that, Paula, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's March. Right. Next meeting is March of the 20th. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay. We used to actually, we were hiring, hiring teachers, not like a public <laughs> school yeah. um, for secondary. Um, we would ha have them uh, do a mock mm -hmm. teacher classroom yeah. to yep. see if they actually could engage us um, and, and make us not public sleep. So yeah. I like those ideas. So yeah. I think the two of us could work well together to, to awesome. really create a solid plan. Okay. So are you thinking about just the two of you doing it? Are you sending out to us? I think feedback? what I can do is I can try to put out what I just said in a cleaner written fashion. I can share that with Paula. And if the two of us can get an agreement on the outline of that, the timeline of that, I can share it with the rest okay. of you and get your feedback. And then if we're good, we can give it up on the website and, and share that with the public. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Are we finished with number two? I think so. Unless we have public yeah. comment. Do we want to do okay. a public comment? Oh, I, you had your hand up for a long time ago, didn't you? I'm sorry. So going back to uh, what we were discussing, uh, means of getting applicants, I'm wondering whether you uh, considered or if you were LinkedIn as a source. Yeah, Paula has, has okay. advertised on that. Okay, that's uh, very, that's a huge. very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. All this process. Tell us who you are again. Uh, all the process we're talking about, is this all going to be done in the executive session? Or the public going to be no, we just talked about that Travis and Paula are going to be discussing it. Oh, the interviews will be in an executive session. Yes. But we, we are talking about having a public engagement piece or some sort of public public video or Don mentioned a public presentation. Yeah, public engagement piece. Or some sort of public public video or Don mentioned a public presentation where the candidates come and introduce themselves to the public at a board meeting. We are talking about public engagement aspects, but the interviews themselves would be in executive session. Initial interviews. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're moving on to old business, discussing Bull Moose Road improvements. Oh, you're missing the best important part here. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, is that are you doing this? Maybe I can do this. I can certainly start the conversation. Um, so almost yesterday, uh, Kenny Grimes, one of his employees, Steve. I don't know Steve's last name. I'm sorry. Not sure. Kevin Barrows, Derek Small, representing the town, mm. myself and two adjacent uh, property owners visited Bull Moose to look at what was being discussed for road improvements. The, the Rudy Farm has asked to improve Bull Moose Road so they can access their fields that are up and back. For those of you that are familiar with that area, <coughs> Bull Moose comes off of Mud City Loop and uh, the Roonies don't have immediate access from Mud City Loop to get to their to get their fields to get their equipment in there, so that would be the purpose for the improvement. So we went up there and uh, we walked the road. We had a good conversation and talked about a bunch of different options. I think it's fair to say that it came down in a general sense to two options. And Kevin, correct me where you think I'm leaving stuff out or. Uh, the first option was to, well, they need to get, they need 16 feet of road. They got to get a piece of equipment that's 16 feet wide up there. And it's not, it's not possible right now. That seems to be clear. So one option was to create 16 feet of road to ditch either side and then slope beyond the ditch to control erosion as much as possible. And I think we agreed that that would be about a 24 foot swath through there at least. Correct. Probably even more, yeah, Kevin's, Kevin's agreeing with me. At, at, least, at least that, when you're looking up that hill on the left side, it's probably gonna go beyond 12 feet from the center line. 
So that would be one option. Oh, by the way, there's, a, there's tree cutting that needs to be done with both of these options. The second option would be to create a 16 foot road, 16 feet of width, but rather than ditching both sides, take advantage of two water bars that are already there. Um, perhaps put a third in. There's one water bar right near the top and there's one water bar right near the bottom. Perhaps one would go in the middle. That there, actually in both situations, we would be replacing the culvert up on top. Is that correct? Yes. So in both situations, we would be replacing the culvert. The culvert is uh, Thank you, Kevin. And um, and then Grimes would bring in what's called dense pack and or gravel and build up the road. Kenny wasn't sure exactly how much would need to come in, but there might be as much as 10 or 12 inches of material that would come in there. So those are, in a rough sense, the, the two suggestions. I, we, I was gonna say I, but all five of us received a email from Selena this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has talked to Kenny Grimes and she would like to go forward with the latter suggestion. If nothing else, it's gonna be less costly but it does provide her a way to get the machinery up there to access the fields. And um, as I said, it's, it's gonna cost her less, gonna cost the farm less. So those are, the, those are the suggestions and just, you know, a couple of numbers, you know, they're, we're looking at uh, from Mud City Loop up to the very end of where the improvement would need to happen is about 427 feet. Derek, our town foreman, uh, measured that for us yesterday when we were out there. The actual widening of the road is about 340 feet. And again, the Rooney's, the Rooney Farm has agreed to take on the burden of, of uh, financing that project. So there, besides the culvert, there would be no economic burden to the town. Okay. The Can town you... would also request to go up in the end and inspect it to make sure that it was done correctly and that it's up to par. You had mentioned town's burden. The economic burden, just cost. No, before, like when you were explaining it. So there was no, we're not encumbering any expense in this process at all, are we? Except, for, oh. except providing the culvert. We're doing the culvert. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that, that would be it. And where does that come out of the budget? That would be my culvert budget. Okay. That would be the culvert budget for those who didn't hear. I think I've presented the um, and, the options. And all um, abutters or concerned parties are in agreement to either one or. They are all on Zoom, along with okay. their their uh, council, Bryce Simon. Okay, that's. I think there, there were concerns about uh, where trees would be felled. They wanted to make sure that the trees would fall in the right of way. Oh, and by the way, we do have, we do have a three rod right of way going up there, which is 49 and a half feet. Is that correct? Just under 50 feet. So that is our right of way going up there right now. So does that mean from the center, of the, the, center. The, the center of the road to the sides, 49 feet. So it's, it's 49 foot width. Width, it's okay. It's a measurement from the center of the road out. So it's 40, a three rod right away is your total, um, total width. Okay. So it's one and a half rods on either side of the center, center line. Okay, okay. So either one of these would fall within our... Well, well within it. Yeah, well, within it, yeah. So all the work would be... To answer the question, um, there were concerns from the property owners. 
you know, I'd be from the people living at the yes, corner there. Yeah. Um, they had concerns. I think they they are on Zoom. They may okay. want to um, add to this. I think Trev, did you? Have yeah, I had a couple questions. But I also would say, and Alexi and Alex might want to uh, address this, but there was an expressed interest in the improvement of the road, and that if the road was improved, it would improve their situation as well. So um, I'll just throw that out there. Okay. All of, so all of the work would be either in our right of way or on Selena's property. There'd be no work on the Butters property, right? Is that all the work would be done within our right of way? Okay. Not even Selena's property. All within the right of way. Property. We're not. Okay. We're not going outside of all, our. We're not going of outside of our right of way. Any I'm assuming we have the money in the current year budget for the culvert. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I think all we are doing is providing a culvert. Is that correct, Kevin? Daryl, yes. Kenny will do the installation, gotcha. the head walls, and okay. and anything that he needs to do. Uh, and the water, the water bars are also Kenny's job. Okay. And it sounds like this would comply with the policy we just approved. Yes. I would agree, Travis. Um, you know, I I'm I'm kind of glad the Roonies have decided on this. The second option, it's a simpler option. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly less invasive. Yes, very, very much so. That was the word I was just going to use. It's less invasive. There's going to be less potential for, I would think, you know, certainly erosion problems yeah. associated with erosion. Okay. Do we know the time frame for completion? We do not. Okay. That was not really discussed yesterday. Okay. So we have a gentleman on Zoom. I can't see your name. Bryce Simon. Bryce. Bryce. Yes, thank you. I represent uh, Ms. Mazel, Alexia Mazel, the owner of the property um, on the corner there, uh, who owns the old farmhouse, um, essentially on the corner of Bull Moose Road and uh, Mud City Loop. And uh, first of all, I, I just think it's important uh, to clarify something relative to the width of the right of way. Uh, my clients had a surveyor looking for record of that right away to determine if it has a specific width of record. I think the three rods is the default and there's been no ability to find an absolute record of the actual width. Although he's the surveyors indicate he may be able to still figure that out among various deeds. But I, I would agree that absent that we're, we're basically going with the default of, of, of three uh, rods. Um, the culvert, there, there's certainly a concern about the culvert being replaced, presumably with a larger culvert. Even though the work would be done within the right of way, it would likely deposit significantly more water than is currently being deposited onto the Maisel property in an area where they've recently added plantings and have future plans. And so there's a, they're very concerned about uh, water uh, depositing onto that area of their land adjacent to the culvert in much larger quantities than, than presently exist. Yep. They're also concerned about potential impact right now, uh, even with the small amount of improvement there, um, and there has been work already done up up above that you probably saw in your site visit that's, that's above the grade that we're talking about. Um, that work was done without any ditching or erosion management concern would be that depending on how this work is done and even under current circumstances there there is significant erosion uh down into the area close to to my client's house i i do think it's important to understand that there are other means of access to this property uh over the farm fields that the equipment could quite easily utilize um and there is certainly a concern that this project is more focused at impairing my client's property than it is at actually providing a needed access. But all that aside, from a procedural standpoint, I think we're also concerned that there was previously a request to some improvements. It was a verbal request. It was it was granted, it sounds like, mm -hmm. maybe formally, maybe somewhat informally. And I think there was some hope that the request would be more formalized so that any approval could be 
Um, and then I would also just add that this is not a right of way that the town has any real interest in maintaining to provide access for the public. It ends uh, shortly after it tops out at elevation, it ends and there are some fenced off areas. So it doesn't go anywhere other than these two properties. And so uh, there's some rationale to the notion that the town would be better off throwing the right away up and, and no longer having it be a town road, considering that there's no real necessity to have it as a town road. Um, and in some ways, the fact that it's a town road and the fact that you all are having to be involved in what's really a neighbor dispute is an unfortunate uh, use of town resources. So I, I, I understand, yeah, I respect the board's decision as to however you want to proceed, but I've just laid out my client's position and I'm welcome to take any questions or myself or Ms. Maisel can try to answer any of the questions that you might have. Thank you. I know that we, I uh, don't remember when, but I know as a board, and I don't remember the two of you were on the board yet. Now, so, the th so the three of you weren't here at the board, just Don and I, that there was verbal agreement. I don't know if we did a motion, if we had to. I don't recall that process. This is for the trees, correct? This is, right? Yeah. This was uh, granting Selena, this was maybe February, because it was during close to sugaring season to grant her access that she could make ro cut down trees on that road. So I know that's in the minute, one of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did we have to do a motion for that? It's my recollection that it was a motion, but I. It was a motion. Wrong. It was a motion? Yes. OK, so we do we do have that motion on record, just FYI. And it was to <clears throat> cut trees. Yes. Yes. Huh? yes. Kevin, can I ask you a question in regards to the culvert? Um, the, need for a new culvert in the size is primarily because of the improvements on top of the road. Will it in theory, is there going to be more water that's going to go through that culvert? I mean, I'm not, I don't quite understand why that would change. It seems like the new culvert is for I don't believe the, there'd be any more water there. I mean, at where the culvert is, it's almost to the height of the land. Mm -hmm. So the only reason for changing the size of it is because it's a very small culvert. Mm -hmm. We change the size so that you don't crush it. Yeah. For the improvements of the road. I don't see it taking any more water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Change, change the size. Doesn't it seem also that that culvert really wasn't ever big enough to begin with? I mean, that culvert's pretty well buried right now. I don't even know who would put that culvert in. Yeah. It is a black piece of black plastic about eight inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not really a culvert. It's not really a culvert, no. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Kevin, um, the diameter has very little to do with the fact uh, of controlling the actual flow. There's X yes, amount of water from being up there today and walking the property with Selena. You know, it is at the height of the land. Um, and there's measures that can be taken on the outflow to mitigate um, any, uh, if we had a torrential rain for a day and a half, there would be an opportunity to do a landing area for any discharge coming out of that culvert to mitigate. Correct. The board should say that we would want a um, stoned outlet right. to allow the water to go in and sheet itself out and it would slow it down before it got on that part. Right. So that would give some respect. It would be all Right, yeah. so it gives some respect to, to where it's going and the effect that it may have. Yes. So is that something in your plans that you'd be doing? Not my plans. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> so if we're putting the culvert in, wouldn't that be? No, we're not putting the culvert in. Oh, we're not? We're supplying the culvert. Oh, so okay. As a okay. Yes. Yes. class four road, I don't have to supply my culvert. I don't put the culvert in. Okay, so, so that suggestion can be made to Selena to put in gravel yeah, rock whatever it is condition of approval, approval. Of approval. Yeah. approval process for this okay a yeah. stone outlet. Right. A stone outlet. Yeah. is that something we have to tell how does this work i think it's if we it, it would be a condition on the and that would be that's what you would put in writing to them to I selena or think we would make a motion, motion. Do that? Make a motion i think we'd okay. make a motion yeah. approving the project as she outlined in her email with the condition that it includes yeah. the stone yeah. outlet by the culvert okay correct that's what All we right. do with it yeah that sounds good. And then there's an enforceable, if, if there is an issue down the road, that we had it in there that that had to be done to protect the 
uh, their concerns. Yep. Kevin, do you recollect any other conditions that we would need to put in there? My only worry is on the um, water bar at the bottom, as it went pretty much right to the end of our right away as it was. And I don't know, I mean, it would have to be cleaned out and maybe cleaned out <coughs> as part of the usage of this. Because, I mean, once it plugs up and backs up, it's just going to then go down and take out the whole road below it. So I'm just thinking that one at the very bottom, where it goes up behind their um, sheds or a little carports there, okay. that will have to be maintained. So you're going to write this all up for a motion? Don, is that what you're thinking? <laughs> okay, good. Taking some notes. Good. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion, please? Yes, yes. please. So there have been a lot of discussion about uh, the Maisel's property, their house, the structure itself. Right. As it currently sits, is within the right of way of that road. And there was a suggestion given to me earlier today that had some merit since they're in the doing the construction that we would require the, the Rooney's the contractor to move the end of the road. I'm not sure how many feet we're talking about, but it's at the end where it meets Mud City Loop and moving that entrance to Mud City Loop down the hill, taking the road away from the Maison house, thus reducing the vibration. They have, they've been concerned about their foundation mm -hmm. from the beginning on this. Uh, it would also more, it would move the house outside by moving the road away taking the house out of the right of way of that roadway such that they aren't encumbered by, they were talking about wanting to build a retaining wall on the uphill side of their house. Unfortunately, we can't grant them permission to build a structure inside a right of way and the, the house is, is in the right of way. So, I mean, it's, if, if they're going to do some construction there now, it would be the time to do this. Um, but as well with that, the Mazelles uh, uh, huts that Kevin's referring to, there's their removable shelters. They do need to be moved out of the right of way. So can we, would that burden fall on the Roonies to move the right of way or is I, that I'm, our burden? Yeah, I mean, they're wanting to do the construction, moving the road uh, down the hill is a part of that construction requirement. If they're gonna improve the road, then that improvement could be made a part of the requirement of the board. Right. So we would, we would, change the right of way. That's what I was saying, but my understanding is Eric saying, no, that would fall under the Rooney. Would, uh, we would have because them moving the road at the end. It's we're, I, I was told 30 feet. I haven't been up to measure it. Could be 60 feet. It's not a large amount, but it's enough to get uh, the Maisel's house out of that right of way. Because uh, the only reason it's moving is for use by the Roonies. Is, is that correct? Correct. So, otherwise, we what? wouldn't. Well, it's moving to to not disrupt the house and the house foundation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's moving so that we maintain our three rod white right of way. Um, is, it, is it possible for me to share the screen? It's moving to yeah, yeah I, to maintain yeah, the class four asking. road. Yeah. Yes. But. Selena's not, the Roonies aren't asking us to move it. No. I just want but, to be clear on that. So. Right, yeah. correct. Yeah, but that's why I'm saying who's who's paying for that? Because we wouldn't normally do it. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to find out what the, so that's, the if we're I just now know, taking on a town burden. Yeah, I mean, we'd be moving the road because of that project. If there's the distance we're moving the road is about eight feet. Yeah. We're not talking about reconstructing a highway in a whole different location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This just, is more or less bending bending the end down the hill about eight feet that would take their house out of that right of really straightening it it is it would be a straightening of the road so the roonies would be responsible for ex remove, moving that road eight feet if they're going to improve the road then the requirement would be for okay. the town to say we're going to improve it you're going to straighten it to get it away from the mizzle's house there are two sides represented here and the, yeah. the third is the town the town I think in serving both parties in this fairly, I, I, I like the idea of the movement of the road. It, the Mazzoles did not build that house in the right of way. That was built many decades ago, but it would move it away. They own the land on both sides. So whatever land may be taken by the movement of the road is given back on the other side. So it's not a loss of property, but the adjustment will help 
to further protect their foundation, their house, uh, and it straightens the road itself. Um, to me, it's, it's the time to do it. If it's going to be improved, then the requirement is made that that improvement be made. Well, it would entail an agreement between the property owners and the town to do the boundary line adjustment. I believe the Mizzles are agreeable to, to a movement in that direction, in large part because the right of way is currently constructed. If I could share my screen, I could show a couple of photos, but going back to a couple of things you spoke about, the culvert is not really operational, as someone mentioned. The ditching so far has not gone to the culvert or, or added to what will be uh, discharged towards the culvert, although it's still tipped up in the direction of Maisel's property and is also overflowing on the side of the culvert. And the worry would be that uh, the improvements that are being talked about, if the road's not moved, could cause significant additional uh, water flow and directly towards the Maisel's foundation. It's a you know the, it's an old farmhouse, so it's a pre-existing use, which is why it's allowed to be in the right of way. But uh, what was just mentioned, I think, by Mr. Dodge is true that. It, the, the, the right of way being so close to the house not only prohibits them from doing additional work to protect their foundation, but it also just it, there is a significant risk that the foundation will be impaired by additional water flow or by large equipment use on the right of way. Um, you know, this is another reason I think that my client would was would, found it preferable if the town would not continue it as a town road, but next. The next best option, I think, for the Maisels is to move it. And uh, I know that they'd be willing to do the, the, the required uh, documentation to be able to move it somewhat, like it was said, 30 feet or so. Uh, I, th I think it's to the west and the north, perhaps. And uh, But I would also say that regardless, whether, whether it's moved or whether it's just additional work, uh, relative to grading and 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 ditching or or grading and and water bars uh and i am concerned about the water bars exceeding the scope of the right of way or the the drainage is exceeding the scope of the right of way it, it would be hoped that whatever solution was provided would be an engineered solution it's a little concerning that there's a plan that was provided by email i haven't seen that email i would think that there should be some more either more formal plan an engineering plan or or some sort of public document that could be reviewed to understand what what the exact proposal is it's a little unclear what that is is it, is it possible for me to share my screen to show the board a couple of pictures i i don't know you could try it i don't know if we can I see it to, i have to give him permission okay i'm sorry to the board i want permission granted for him to do this why not sure sure <laughs> Well, you're just going to have to give me a minute, folks. Okay. <laughs> so, Eric, while they're doing that, um, shifting the road itself, as long as it stays within the right of way, there's no real issue with that. There's no other documentation as long as we stay within the current right of way. Is that correct? That That's correct. You can move the road because the road is 16 feet, the right of way is 50. You yeah. can move the 16 feet within the right of way without an adjustment to property lines. Right. It's the board's decision whether you want to take the, the. It's, it's a relatively minor legal step to move that property line itself to create no further confusion down the road. I mean, if, without just just moving the road within the right of way it can be done legally. We certainly have the right to right. do that. It doesn't solve their problem. It doesn't solve that problem that could come back years down the road that their house is still within the current right of way so to me it's a relatively minor expense for the town it keeps it clean but it keeps it clean all the way around and keeps anybody down the road from saying hey the right of way goes here i'm going to put the road right up against their house yeah i don't think it would happen but what expense so the ex is the town incurring uh, it, the, the legal process bryce can probably speak to that more i'm not asking to give a price here in the meeting but uh, I think the, the movement here is and only involving the one property owner in the town. Um, it's a relatively minor adjustment. To, Would to a, the a survey be necessitated? I believe you'll find that they are having the property surveyed now. And if <coughs> we were to give, if you were to give the permission for this to happen, the surveyor could be directed by the Maisels to actually draw that in. So the plat gets refiled when they are completed and it would show the road having been moved. 
and from that drawing, the legal documents can be drawn. So just to be clear, the May is all <coughs> providing the surveyor. They're, they're currently, that's who I spoke to this not morning, the was their surveyor. Not the town. That's correct. Okay. And just and to be clear on the legal costs, once we had a survey, I would anticipate that I would prepare the necessarily the necessary deeds or quick claim deeds or what have you to adjust the line. And it would really just be the cost for the town to have your lawyer review those, make any necessary changes and and help finalize that. So I, I, I don't think that would be a significant legal expense. I do respect how, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say how quickly could that be done, Bryce? Well, once the survey is complete, it can be done within a matter, you know, the document can be drawn up in a matter of days. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, again, it, it, the other question is to what extent is in engineering required? It would seem that it's fairly simple to just crown a road. You're talking about putting in something like stay mat or, or gravel or something. So it doesn't sound like it would have to be significantly engineered. Uh, so I think that would be a fairly short time frame. I think that uh, Ken Grimes would, I mean, he's got decades of experience, yeah. would uh, easily be able to bring something together or, you know, something more formal in the form of a drawing so that there was a an understanding by all parties, including the town, the three parties involved. What the final product was going to be looked like. It looked like so. It's it's a clarity that he's asking for. I don't think that's out of the. And even with the current with the current right of way, because of the way it comes down, a fairly steep grade past my client's foundation, there's already a significant amount of um, of of gravel and rocks and sand that's already accumulated on the far side of Mud City Loop, just as a result of erosion and runoff from this, and so. Uh, having it shifted in the way that we're talking about, I think would uh, give us a chance to address that issue more effectively. It would also help in the fact that the, the other proposals, I think, create a real risk that there would still be a lot of significant water incursion either onto the Maisel's field where they've had plantings or towards their uh, house. Whereas I think this proposal addresses both of those issues by by providing a, a better water flow solution. Um, so yeah, I, it, it it would seem that the the mo moving of the of the travel you know moving of the right of way changing the travel portion away from the foundation and having concurrent water management I think seems like a more comprehensive solution uh, and it also addresses the fact that we're dealing here with uh, you know a very old pre existing building that was there you know long enough ago that having the the, the road or right of way right up against the building was not as much of a concern as it would be now considering the much heavier equipment that would be used nowadays and things like that. So we're looking at the town's gonna to provide a culvert, the Roonies are going to be cutting trees, the Roonies are going to be providing um, some type of gravel or rock for the culvert to empty into, and the town and the Roonies are gonna move the road, and then the town is going to be involved in um, not an easement, but some kind of uh, situation so that we have they have clear title to that piece of the property that where the road has been moved. Right. Is that anything? Is there anything else? I think the only other piece he was talking a little bit about the water bars below. Yeah. Right. And I think that it would be prove everybody that the outflow of, or the bottom of the water bar because they they uh, travel uh, at an angle across the road for outflow, um, that there be some mitigation of uh, erosion uh, at the edge of the, of the road and the water bar just to help disperse any um, you know, torrential rain. That Is that the last road. water bar or all water bar bars? It would be the, both the ditch and the water bars that are, are proposed in the, in the road upgrade. Okay. I make a, so Kevin, could you do a stoned outlet for each of the water bars as well? Not just the culvert on top? Yes. Yeah, it could be done. So for the bottom one, and then if there was one put in the middle, you'd do the same thing there? Correct. But 
is he's not doing. I'm not doing. He's not doing the work. Well, I, I know you're not doing. It. You you being hypothetical. Okay. Okay. I just was. I don't mean you. Right. Yeah. Right. Just okay. ask it if it works. Yeah. yeah. Could we have Eric relay these conditions to the Roonies? Have the Roonies put this in writing? Chat with their neighbor here. Get both parties on board, and then the town can sign off on this. I feel like we're kind of all over the place here. I would like to see this all in writing. And have the Roonies. I know that both parties involved are are happy and on board with said plan and writing personally well i think that maybe to to start the ball rolling that we would come up with a set of criteria based on our conversation tonight both with the attorney and um, yeah. kevin and ourselves this is our interpretation of what we'd like to see have done uh, yeah. on the road which would include replacement of the culvert um, the water bars, the outflows of the water bars, as well as the movement of the access and egress off of Bull Run, uh, Bull Moose Road onto Mud City Loop Road um, so that um, it gets their house out of the right of way. Could we put this in writing and sign off on it as a board and give like, that to the room? So, that would be the motion. Yeah, that's Okay. So I just want to make sure we're very clear about yeah. what we're asking right. them to do. Right. Travis, it's a great comment. You're right. We do need to be clear about this. Yeah. Yes. Because there's already been confusion on this project. One other detail I would just ask the board to consider is that there's been talk in the past about how, if there are trees that are cut, I think, the, is it Kevin who's the road foreman? Is that who's speaking? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's the superintendent. superintendent. Sorry. I think Kevin, either Kevin or one of his colleagues had mentioned at one time in my client's recollection, that that it's not enough just to cut the trees, that it's important to grind the stumps or remove the stumps because they can provide continuing barriers, both for water and for, and, and they can just create problems for the construction. If, if uh, that's one issue that might wanna be clarified is just have a condition that any trees that are removed shall include the stumps. And then the other uh, question I would have for Kevin, I just am ignorant about is I don't know in its current iteration or as changed, given that there is some concern about erosion down onto uh, Mud City Loop, would there also need to be water management to ensure that uh, water was able to flow under Mud City Loop through some sort of culvert? Or is it, or, or are you confident that there's sufficient area uh, to the side of Bull Moose Road where it would be newly located to handle that water erosion or the, the water uh, Flow. I think at this point, yes. I don't. I don't see any issues with that. If, if there was something in the future that reason that it backed up on the that end of it down below on the side of uh, Mud City Loop, well then then we would have to entertain putting a culvert across. I'm not. I'm Bryce. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I, I'm not sure the Mazels would be happy about that discharge water now going into their other piece of property on the other side of the road causing more issues down that way. But I'm, I don't want to speak for them or you, but it, I, I would hope and prefer if we can make the road slope right, that it would stay on the uphill side of that ditch uh, and, and follow the road down down through rather than going off into their meadow. That, that's going to create a whole new set of problems for them. Oh, I agree with that generally. But the, so again, I don't know if I can share my screen yet. It's still disabled, but um, maybe if I could show you uh, that, I don't know if you can see this. But that's a picture of across the street in the meadow from Bull Moose Run now. And what you can see is there's already a significant amount of gravel that's already traveling across the road and being discharged onto their field. So it, it, it just knowing the, the forces of gravity and water, the concern is that uh, however that's managed, and from what Kevin, I, I trust what Kevin says, is that if, if you put the water bars in properly and if there's level spreaders and things like that, I'm confident that, that that can be managed and that Grimes is competent at being able to uh, structure that or design it in a way that would uh, be adequate. Um, I think it's important too, though, that the, the manner and one other condition I think would be helpful for clarity and also to protect people's interests going forward is that if the tree, if there are trees that need to be removed, they should be removed uh, by qualified, you know, uh, foresters who are capable of ensuring that 
they are felled within the right of way and that they're topped and then felled so that there's not a lot of risk that they're just you know dropping uh, in in places that they shouldn't be dropping. I, I'm not familiar with, with uh, Kenny Grimes, but I know people here are and. Well, I don't know. The county's doing the logging. I think there is another he's, logger that's involved. He's a he's, he's a logger, right? But no, he's no. not. He's a contractor. Who's who's dropping the trees? I, I don't know who. Well, the, we don't know. The Rooney's have somebody else. They have somebody else dropping the trees. So they have, they have another logger dropping the trees. The logger the, the logger themselves have liability need to have liability insurance. I think that maybe yeah. what Bryce is asking that we get a liability insurance policy proof from the loggers. Um, in the event that there is a mishap in falling a tree, that they have coverage. But yeah. I, that would be ideal. It would be helpful to know that the um, that the logger is qualified, and and also that there be a condition that the the trees not be dropped. Well, they would just stay right away. Stay within the right away. Stay right away. Right away. Yeah. Right. Yes. And that uh, awesome. is very wide, but it's not wide compared to the 120 foot trees that would be going down. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, if you, to put a restriction on a logger to make sure the trees fall on the right of way it means you've got a 120 foot tree going on a 50 foot right of way. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> yeah. so. The way they do that is they top the tree. Yes. The Precision cutting. Right. <laughs> but the, what he's talking about is specialized equipment. We're talking about bucket trucks, you know, uh, the high the high end. Uh, tree cutting that, that takes place and that that comes at a, at a great expense. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the, to my knowledge, uh, I, I will tell you right front, I, I don't know every tree up there, probably as good as the Mizzles to do, but shy of their sheds, which need to be moved out of the right of way anyhow, there's nothing up there to be damaged. If there are crops that they have in our right of way, uh, those should be watched uh, you know, and considered when cutting the trees, not to drop them on their planted product. They could fall in the other direction where there isn't anything planted. I think a, a logger will not seek to damage uh, anything they don't want to have to pay for. It cuts into profits. You think you got it? <laughs> well, no, I'm just going to, before I make a motion, I just want to make sure that I do have most of it here, but of course, the motion, this isn't it, but I, give, I'm going to suggest that you got way too much going on to make a motion tonight. I'm going to suggest you bring this back on the 20th between now and then we work with, we work with uh, Kenny Grimes to get a drawing in place such that all parties are aware of what the intent is on the road. We allow Matt Reed time to finish his survey uh, and, and get those documents in place so that when the work is done. There's no guesswork as to where the road's going to be lying. It'll be drawn in, uh, and and then we can give us time to get the uh, uh, proof of insurance from the logger. I, I, there's some things. There are a lot of moving pieces right now, and we're putting some requirements that I think the Rooneys aren't on tonight. They they had another engagement they had to get to. Um, they would need to consider some of these things. I mean, they're they're financial considerations for them too. So. Yeah. Trying to look at both same. sides and our side as well here. It sounds same. very wise. I, I really want to see it in writing. Yeah. Yeah. That way, we, we would come back before the 20th, if possible, uh, and I think it is possible, we'd come back with something a little more structured in writing. Uh, you know, Bryce could take, have a look at it as well, you know, have all parties understand what the intent for the board yeah. to do is here, because the board has the authority on the road. Right? So, some of the other things being spoken of aren't necessarily a concern of the board, but we would get an outline. Some of the considerations here are, are just being neighborly. I mean, understanding what the finished product is going to look like, I don't think is unreasonable. Where the bars are going to be located, that we're, you're requiring the outflow be covered with a, a, a eight inch minus rocks per, per se to, to handle the erosion. But there are some specifics that Kevin can now relay to Kenny. Kenny comes up with a drawing, you know, we're just a lot closer to finalizing a, a well understood and clear agreement yeah. than we are tonight. Mm -hmm. So can I just, uh, not as part of a motion, but just make sure that we do in fact have everything? That would be great. So yeah. we'd be looking to give them permission to improve bull moose up to 
but not beyond the Maisel Rooney property line. That's where it all that's where it all ended. That's the way I understand it. Yeah. Which is approximately four hundred and twenty seven four hundred and twenty seven feet up from Mud City Loop. That um, that the trees be felled by a qualified logger as best as possible in the right of way. With liability insurance. Proof. With, with proof. liability insurance. Proof of liability insurance given to the town. That there be a new culvert provided by the town be put in place, but not by the town will not do the work. The town will simply provide the culvert. That there would be stump removal. And I did talk to Kenny about this yesterday, and he, he will do the stump removal. That there be stoned outlets on each of the water bars and the culvert. That material be put in the roadway, be added to the roadway. And that would be that dense mat or gravel. Mm -hmm. And that the property line would be moved such that the house would no longer be in the right of way. But not just the house, but there needs to be about that eight foot buffer from the foundation to the new right of way. I it's don't approximately. Know. I don't know if you need eight feet of buffer between the outside edge of the right of way. The right of way just needs to come away from the house. Right. I mean, how far you move the road, you're now increasing the expense of the bill. So mm -hmm. I think there, you know, Kenny can look at it, Kevin can be there with him and take a look to see what the needs are. Uh, Matt Reed involved as well because he'd want to know what the intent is so he can draw it properly and survey it properly. But okay. um, I, I wouldn't set a, an eight foot distance to the outside edge of a 50 foot right of way because now we're, we're going significantly down the hill with our right of way. Okay, I'm simply looking okay. to protect their house from our right of way. It could so be just, a two foot clearance. So just that the house is out of the right of way. Now. Correct. Okay. And that's everything that I have written down, scribbled down by chicken scratch. I don't know if anybody has anything else to add. I think you got everything. Bryce, do you have anything more to add? Not at this time. I, I do think that uh, it would be helpful to have a process where we can see this uh, written up. I can meet with the nasals about it. We can meet with the surveyor, make sure that everyone's on the same page and uh, and come back. Uh, before you, I think that that's a, a very good deliberative approach. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate what was said about uh, the trees being felled within the right of way to the extent possible. Obviously, the property owners have their property rights that are independent of, of that. But And I also respect what was said about uh, moving the road, not the right of way, just because I think it is true that if you move, well, be moving the right of way so that the house would not be in the right of way but i i think the um, number of feet that the right of way has to move is something that i think we would need to determine with the surveyor on the ground but that, again i think that's why it's good to have a deliberate a deliberative process where we have one iteration of this that's more in principle and then maybe come back and refine it once we have a greater understanding of exactly where this would be located yeah, I wouldn't want this to delay beyond the 20th. I, I know they're farmers right now getting their first cut hay. Yeah. And I know that's a consideration for the Roonies. They want to get this in so they can access their field. I just don't think with all that we're talking about tonight, you're safe enough to go mm -hmm. to a motion tonight. Okay. I, I agree with that. Uh, I guess my question is, if we set June 8th as a target to try to, to get there, and if we're not still not there, we would go to our next meeting. But if we, we, we can try that. Let me see what we can come up with. Kevin's going to require a focus by Kevin and uh, and the other parties to, to get together in a short order here to get the agreement for where the road would situate to. Right. I mean, it, it may not work, but at least it gives us a We goal. can try. Right. <coughs> we can try. Uh, all parties. Yes. Uh, because time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. uh, That'd be two weeks from tonight, June 8th. Right. 
Do we have a meeting June 8th or we just want the doctor nope. that's in place by June 8th? We just want to keep meeting, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> We kind of like Thursday nights. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting used to them. <laughs> Nobody wants to do this. We put set on this thing. Hey, so the only two, John and Judith, are the only two that Tom could that began with his ruling. And it's been over, over a year working. No, it hasn't. It. No, it hasn't. It was just, it was like no, February. It's been a while, too. Like February when oh, Selena was here. It started before that. Then you've got your February and make everybody agree she could cut the trees. And now we're putting more stuff on her about the trees. That's fine. Whatever. I'm sure she's willing to do anything. But for God's sakes, let's get something done. Yes or no? I mean, it's been a long time back and forth. Let's get lawyers involved, adding more stuff in. We can keep this on for years. This is serious. This farm is stuff. Let's get something done. I believe, I believe we have. June 7th, we can do that. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's all. It's been dragging on forever. Well, it's not intentionally dragging on. Uh, we, have yeah. been, uh, we have been encumbered by a very lengthy budget process. We have already been encumbered by uh, class four road policy discussion. And the, and the, dis the discussion in was encompassing more than just Bullman's Road. We already had the Ross Hill Road con conversation last meeting. So, this this has uh, definitely taken a while. Local government doesn't necessarily act quickly, but we do try and do things right the first time, and <coughs> therefore priorities do have to be set. And that's uh, I, I, we're very conscious of uh, their process of, of cutting hay, and if we can get this in and done uh, and have a meeting on June eighth solely for this topic. Wonderful. I, I want to work with the Roonies. I want to work with the Mazels. I also want to make sure that the town is protected as well. So. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, with all respect to that participant, I would just mention to him that they have very ready access to these fields by other means over the 900 acres that's up there, and that this is this is a very discreet issue. Uh, the town has a policy; they had a legal policy that was drafted. It had been refined significantly. These are complicated issues, and I, I it is a democratic process, which I do appreciate the board engaging in. Thank you. Okay, I, I think we can move on. We can. We can. Okay. So, Don, do you have a motion? Well, we're not going to make a motion. I do no. not. No, 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 not on that. No. Okay. So, I, I, just a question. Okay. Um, Eric, will you draft a letter to yes. parties? Yes. Okay. Sort of outlining the discussion tonight, so that the Roonies and the Mazels have something in writing that okay. that of uh, uh, more than just the meeting tonight, but they have something in writing for the municipality of what the expectation is. Does that make sense? It, it does. I'm intending on that being ready for the 8th. I, I'm going to focus all our attention on that. I can send out an email to all right. the parties involved and let them know that the discussion was, you know, it's complete. Uh, the Maisels are here tonight. Uh, Mr. Simon represent them as well. Uh, the Roonies, I'll bring them into the loop and Kenny Grimes at the same time. Um, I. I'm concerned that too many pieces of writing are start conflicting with each other. If I leave something out and then we got a back and forth, I just, sure. I think the parties are aware of it. We'll make the Rooney's aware of, of everything tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and and keep them, I, I'm just leery about putting more and more and more in writing when I know we're headed toward an agreement document. The town is really the holder of it. Again, the road, it belongs to the town. What happens with the road? is priority here, mm -hmm. but we're working with our neighbors. So we are trying to make all considerations possible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So. Coming. It's coming. We're waiting for other business. I motion. <laughs> we're moving on to other business. It'll be a surprise. No. Interesting. <laughs> Other business. Sorry for the delay. I'm still learning how to get these things attached to the agendas. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So I would make a motion to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or pros prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. Perfect. 
Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I further move to go into executive session to discuss the pending and probable litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include Town Administrator Eric Dodge. I was, got a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.